This is a travel vlog documenting a five-day trip I took my girl on to Calgary at the Palliser Hotel in the Chateau Lake Louise in Banff National Park. From the road trip to the dining experience and a few pup cups mixed in there as well, this video is sponsored by Raycon and this is our Rocky Mountain Alberta road trip starting in Vancouver. He's from Calgary, just outside of Calgary. And my chick, she's never really ventured anywhere in Western Canada, like, at all. He has seen more places in the country than she has. We're going to change that this weekend. The same amount of places. So we're going to be driving 10 hours east to Calgary, where we're going to split the drive up halfway and stay overnight in Revelstoke. Stay in Revelstoke for tonight. Now, these were those luxurious Revelstoke accommodations. Very nice. And after a Rocky Mountain sunrise in the Selkirks, it was off for another six hours through Banff National Park. We ended up stopping for a pee break for a corgi. She blew a tire, I had to pick her up. And then after that, it was past Castle Mountain and into Alberta's largest major city, Calgary, specifically at the corner of 9th Avenue and the Palliser Hotel. Now I booked this trip for a few reasons. Over the past couple months, I've been reflecting on my pro hockey season, or the season that wasn't, I should say, and I've really found a true love for Canadian history, geography, and if you've seen any of my videos the past few years following my professional hockey journey, I love sharing travel vlogs. And I booked this trip as a way to say thank you to my woman for how awesome she treats me, and also the beginning of working on a series on the Grand Railway Hotels of Canada that paint the story of Canada's history, which you'll see the whole series roll out closer towards the summer. But the Palliser Hotel was the first day on this journey, and I gotta say, the Palliser Hotel did not disappoint. Now this afternoon, we made a reservation and got dressed up for afternoon tea. Now this is an English tradition of, well, obviously tea, sandwiches, scones, and cake. And this was incredible. This 110 year old fireplace behind us as well is the absolute icing on the cake, because this dining area truly is a time machine that at least for myself personally brought me back to memories of the early 1900s. Not because I was alive back then, but the moments that I've shared with hundreds, thousands, possibly even millions of travelers that have sat in this exact same seat before me. Now, as you saw, there was quite a few tasty treats there. And so the first thing I did after that was get my ass to the gym. And this was Bella trying to give me the simulated spa experience since we did not get a chance to visit the spa in the hotel during this trip. The next morning before the crack of dawn, we got a private tour of the legendary Calgary Tower. This was Calgary's tallest structure at one point in time, and the glass bottom viewing deck really emphasizes that. I don't know why, but anybody tall like myself is for whatever reason terrified of heights, and I'm the exact same way. But you do get some incredible perspective and great views from the top of the tower, and after a bit the sun decided to come out as well, which really showcased how beautiful the foothill prairies of Calgary can be. After that we headed down the shaft of the tower. And since I am a functioning coffee addict, we had to get that caffeine hit and cup of joe in the body back at the Palliser's restaurant, the Hawthorne Lounge. Now, we also had breakfast as well in front of the fireplace. And this, to be honest, this may be my new favorite place to drink coffee and have a meal. I think it's pretty obvious why, because this is a truly luxurious and time transcending experience. After that, our little corgi needed to go for a walk. And by walk, I mean he ended up bottoming out in the fresh blanket of Calgary snow since his arms and legs are exactly three inches long. The next day we packed up and headed out of the Palliser for the second half of our trip, this portion being two hours west towards the Continental Divide in the Rocky Mountains. We're gassing up the CX-5 for a little walk through Banff this afternoon and then staying at the Chateau Lake Louise for the next two nights, so we're excited. We would end up driving about an hour away into the Rockies towards Banff and side note, every single time I see the Rocky Mountains, I always wonder what the original settlers must have seen when they saw this for the first time. No roads, no infrastructure, just pure natural beauty blows my mind and this never gets old to see. Anywho, we headed into Banff, made a quick pit stop at the Heritage train station, did a little window shopping and walked through a bunch of the main shops in the main strip, and then headed back on the road for another hour west towards Lake Louise. Who's that corgi waving at me? Heard his mom's cute. This is the Chateau Lake Louise and it's one of Canada's most recognized, most beautiful, most popular, and most expensive hotels in the country. And we are gonna be spending two nights here. The chateau itself turned centennial this year as what you see today was built in 1924, although the original chalet that burned down in 1923 would have been well over 120 by now. But there is something so peaceful about this area. Yes, it gets hectic and swarmed by tourists in the summer when Lake Louise thaws, but personally, I think the Canadian Rockies are at their best when they are snow capped in the peak of winter. But back in the chateau at the Fairview Dining Room, which is the main restaurant in the hotel, it was designed with 
huge, larger-than-life floor-to-ceiling windows that look out onto the jaw-dropping Victoria Glacier. Now, there are no blinds here, so you get the full experience and the glow off Lake Louise, hence why I'm kind of squinting here. And this afternoon, we had coffee and dessert. They definitely had a few crowd pleasers in the menu for dessert, but I'm a basic pumpkin spice lover, so we got the pumpkin spice cake a la mode, and it was so good, especially with that cold ice cream on that warm cake. Now, our accommodations in the room, though, much like the Palliser Hotel, was pet friendly, and I know that Wally was definitely loving the attention and the VIP four-legged treatment that he was getting this entire trip. Now, later that night, we would head outside for some delicious hot schmoes. They're called s'mores, Buzz. Right, right, of course. And this was pretty cool. Looking out on Lake Louise, hearing the stories of the staff and the employees that literally live here in the chateau since it's so remote, sharing a good conversation with my woman, and also, I really liked roasting marshmallows for my woman since she kept burning them and can I say? I love giving her new experiences and showing her new things. But roasting marshmallows in the great outdoors outside the Chateau Lake Louise was awesome. And after that, gotta work out those marshmallows in the gym. Which brings me to today's video sponsor, Raycon. With Raycon, premium audio doesn't have to price you out. Raycon is defying the industry by giving you booming audio and luxury comfort. I'm using the Raycon fitness earbuds here in cobalt blue. I can toggle between their noise isolation mode and awareness mode, which essentially allows you to hear your surroundings. Raycon makes your earbuds water resistant and designed for maximum durability and are designed to actually not fall out of your ears as you can see here and have a wide array of controls you can access by tapping on the side of the earbuds. And right now, you can get a pair for 15% off when you click the first link in the video description and use the code TRAV, T-R-A-V, my name, at buyraycon.com slash TRAV. That's 15% off my favorite earbuds on the planet right now with the code TRAV. And thank you so much to Raycon for sponsoring this video and making it possible. And the next morning, you know the drill, coffee, you gotta get that caffeine hit first thing. This was included on our reservation, as well as breakfast in the buffet lounge. And then we headed out to the hotel to go check out Morant's Curve. Canada's most famous track right here. Morant's Curve, the $10 bill. This area is also super peaceful and really enjoyable to just sit back, relax, take in the scenery and spend some quality time with my woman and our little corgi. The next day we packed up, checked out of the chateau, and it was back on the road, 10 hours back home, the Pacific Northwest in Vancouver. Over the next coming weeks and months, I do plan to stay at a bunch more railway hotels and build a catalog of footage to roll out this summer of the traveling series on the Grand Railway Hotels of Canada. But please rest assured, while I'm also working on this series, which is hopefully going to open up some more doors for my post-retirement career, I am still training, I'm still skating, and still in the pursuit of turning myself into the best version of myself to perform for the upcoming professional hockey season in Europe next year. Vlog style videos like this will be uploaded a lot less consistently and more sporadically over the next few months. My podcast, Sling the Biscuit, will continue on every single Sunday as it has for almost three years now. And leave a comment down below if you need anything from me, if you have any questions you want answered. Thank you to Raycon for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.